digital imaging. Now I made sure my microphone was switched back to the right one after the last video on digital audio. But digital imaging, this is some cool stuff. We are really living in some absolutely amazing times where we're really able to produce content that you used to have to have major companies behind you. You used to have to have major equipment and massive funding to do. I mean, to do your own music was quite expensive. Now, the software is out there, the technology is out there where you can do a lot of it on your own. Digital imaging is kind of the same thing. What we're talking about with digital imaging is the creation of digital images, typically from a physical scene. The term is often assumed to imply or include the processing, compression, storage, printing, and displaying of such images. For our purposes, we're basically talking about photography here. Now, digital imaging can mean different things to different people. For example, if you're in the medical industry, Digital imaging could talk about x-rays, MRIs, CTs, things like that. And even that's changed quite a bit from the old days. Back in my other life, when I was still in the chiropractic world, we had to do uh, x-ray positioning and also learn about how to take x-rays. And so we dealt with the Bucky and the film and all this stuff. Now, all that's digital as well. So digital imaging is more or less taking an image and turning it into a digital format, just like digital audio is taking audio signals and digitizing those as well. There is something you need to be aware of. We talk about color mode. We can have three big color modes. We can have CMYK. This stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. Key is black. This is typically used for your four color printer. So if you take a look at your printer, mine's right over there. I have these four ink cartridges on my printer this actually saves you money by the way over the long haul not that you know ink is cheap uh, but it saves you money over the long haul for example let's say that i print out a picture and there's a lot of yellow in it well my yellow cartridge is going to take the hit and so i'll replace the yellow cartridge and the older color printers was black and color you know you had the black ink and you had the color ink you'd have to replace the whole thing so cmyk this is your printing color mode, more or less. Then you have RGB. This stands for green, uh, red, green, and blue. This is what you're gonna find in things that transmits light. For example, your TV computer monitor. Gray scale, these are shades of gray between black and white. Now, personally, I love shooting in gray scale. I love black and white photography. It just does something um, to the image. Image file format, just like we talked about with audio file format, we have different ways to store image files. We also have things like lossless, which is the full image, no compression, lossy compression, which is a loss of some quality. We can also have things like vectors. Vectors is uh, turns into mathematical as opposed to a bitmap, which you can't change. So let's take a look at these file formats. JPEG, this is probably one of the more common ways to store image files. It is very effective in compressing the image. In fact, I've read from some experts that you really shouldn't try to compress a JPEG. So for example, if you zip a file, you don't want to zip JPEGs. It can actually make the JPEG bigger because the JPEG compression is so efficient, so effective, compressing it another way could actually cause it to increase in size. A TIFF, this is a tagged image file format, lossless. This is used in many image editing programs. Raw files, this is a raw image format. There's no compression, and these things can be massive in size. When I was still in the world of the FBI, a lot of the forensic folks used to have to take images as raw file formats because that could be the only thing that could be used as evidence. It meant it was not tampered with. It wasn't compressed. It wasn't changed in any way. It was a raw file image of a crime scene. A GIF, this is a graphic interchange format. This was made by CompuServe back in the day, and it was commonly used for web graphics. A BMP, BMP this is a Windows bitmap. These are uncompressed images. I would not use these anymore. There really is no use for bitmaps for a consumer market. And our last one, which is also very popular, is a ping. This is a portable network graphic, and whenever I say ping, I can't help but think of the Monty Python episode where they're talking about the machine that goes ping. Anyhow, yes, I'm a geek. I admit it. I embrace it. 
this is a open format to replace the GIF. It's another good choice for digital pictures. So most of you are probably going to work in the world of JPEGs and pings. The next thing I want to talk about, which is really cool, are digital cameras. Digital cameras are awesome and you have a digital camera. Even if it's on your phone, the digital camera on your phone are very, very powerful compared to technology in the past. We have three basic types of ways or three different types of digital cameras. We have the point and shoot. So for example, the camera on your phone is a point and shoot camera. These are what your parents have. Um, most likely it's where you just have the camera, you point something and you shoot and you're good to go. The DSLRs and the mirrorless cameras, these are more of your higher end cameras. So for example, I have my Sony camera. I use this as my digital camera. I also use it as my video camera, which we'll talk about in the next video. And the DSLRs are pretty cool. The lenses pop out. You can change your lenses. You can get more advanced lenses. You can accessorize all that good stuff. Uh, but you can really do a lot with a DSLR. Mirrorless camera is basically a DSLR camera minus a mirror. We're not going to go into really the specific differences between those two. I have provided a link both here on the slide as well in the description from Tom's guide. Remember we talked about Tom's hardware like in lesson two. You can check them out as far as what the differences are there. Image quality. Quality measured in megapixels. Two megapixels can produce quality four by six inch photos. Let me pause for a second what I mean by this. The old days, when we used to take the old film, the 35 millimeter film, and drop it off at the, you know, the, the CVS, the Walgreens, the Photo Mart, we would get back our regular pictures, the four by six inch pictures. This is about two megapixels. So for example, your phone might be rated at eight, 10, whatever. Uh, your camera, your regular cameras might be rated a lot higher than that. Really, for a decent quality, regular picture, all you need is two megapixels. This, by the way, is an important tip for you because you can save space. Your phone, your camera has limited storage. So for example, my, my camera, I've got the SD cards, quite large because I do video with this. If I'm out in the field and I'm taking a bunch of pictures and I know I'm not going to blow them up to poster size, I'm going to probably lower the megapixels that it stores the pictures as because I don't need 10, 20 megapixels. Two is what we have for a typical picture. Five megapixels can produce a really good quality 8x10 photo. So you don't really need to max out your camera's uh, megapixels as far as what you're taking. Zoom. Zoom can either be optical zoom, which is good, or digital zoom, which is complete and utter crap. The optical zoom is, and I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can. I'll hold it up to my thing here. If you notice... There's an actual physical change in the lens. The physical change is the optical zoom. I zoom in, I zoom out, I don't lose any quality because it's a mechanical change in the lens. The digital zoom is what you're going to find on your smartphone as well as some other, uh, some other cameras. Digital zoom is the software zooming in. You're not increasing the quality of the picture. In fact, you are getting a pretty lousy quality picture because the software is digitally expanding it or shrinking it. So when you're looking for a camera, pay attention to your optical zoom, but completely, completely ignore digital zoom. It does absolutely nothing for you. So you have your images. Now you want to edit your images. This is image editing software. And my recommendations on this one are Adobe, of course, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop. For those who are kind of serious about your image editing, this is kind of an industry standard. You have Elements, Adobe Photoshop Elements. This is the um, kind of scaled down version. It's still incredibly powerful. It's going to be cheaper and it's more for a general consumer market. And you can do touch ups. You can improve the quality of pictures, that kind of stuff. You have Adobe Illustrator which deals with more of your vector stuff. This is more of your um, logos, things like that. Really, you're not going to get into too much of the difference on that one. You have GIMP. GIMP is a free open source version of Adobe Photoshop, also very powerful. And you have Google Picasa, 
which is a uh, editing software via Google. So now that you have your pictures, now that you have them edited, you want to share them. Online photo albums, these have become increasingly popular to share pictures. You can share them with your friends and your loved ones and your family, all that good stuff. You can check out the following places. I've included a bunch of places here on uh, this slide. These are some of the more popular ones. You have Flickr, Picasso, Shutterfly, Smug Mug, Photo Bucket, and of course social media has become kind of the de facto online photo album for a lot of us if you use Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Google+. Okay, two, two words of caution. Two words of caution here. Facebook. Yes, I have my pictures on Facebook. I share them with my family, my friends. Check your terms and services. More than once, Facebook has snuck in a we own your pictures clause into their terms of service, which means that when you upload a picture on Facebook, Facebook owns your picture. I'm not sure if they're still doing that, but check your terms of service with them. Next one is Snapchat. The idea behind Snapchat is that if you send a picture, it will destroy itself after a set period of time. It will supposedly delete itself after a set period of time. Let me tell you right now, that is farcical. That is laughable. That is a joke. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Snapchat software. I'm not saying Snapchat doesn't delete the image. But what I am saying is that there are so many ways around that that process that you can save any picture somebody sends you the rule is if it becomes digital and you put it online it's there forever so pay attention especially if you're a teenager if you send somebody a snapchat photo you don't want the world to see don't send it because you can screen capture and i got a free screen capture you've seen me screen capture stuff off my phone before the information security i showed you my blizzard account thing you can capture anything that comes on your phone. You can capture anything that comes through your computer. So please don't think that what you put through Snapchat will be deleted and nobody will ever see it again. There are entire websites dedicated to young women and men who thought this didn't turn out too good. So watch out for that. Okay, enough of that little soapbox. Our next video and last one in our series, we're going to take a look at digital video.